actually know how to play the guitar, so let's not embarrass myself. But I do know some physics, and that tells me a little bit about why the guitar plays all the different notes that it does play. Um, something as simple as we can change the tension on the string. That changes the pitch. We can also, of course, change the length of the string. That also works. And also, we can just play a different string altogether. We've got the lighter string and the heavier string. So all these factors comes in to decide what vibration frequency that the string likes to vibrate at, and therefore deciding what sound it plays. That's what we'll be studying today um, in our standing waves lab. This system, however, is a bit more complicated, and we can't measure a lot of things on it. So we're going to simplify things and just use a simple piece of string. So first off, you get a piece of string that's quite a bit longer than the length of the table. And then you do what you have to do to get the mass density of the string. So here's the setup of the lab itself, actually. Now that we've got the mass density of our string, we would have threaded through the speaker, tied onto the uh, C-clamp on the one side, and laid onto the pulley on the other side. On the side of the pulley, the tension in the string is provided by a couple weights that we set. Um, notice, of course, we're using the Newton set and not the Gram set. Makes our calculation a little easier. And the speaker itself is driven by a function generator, that white box there, which allows us to change the frequency fairly easily. Lastly, we have a couple of pieces of carbon paper just to help us see the white string vibrating against a better black background. The one thing to keep in mind with this setup is that the length of the string is not the entire length from end to end. It's the vibrating length. So that's from the C-clamp to the pulley. So a quick note on the function generator itself. Uh, here's the power button. You push it on, push it in to make it on. Uh, you want to make sure we're using the sine wave. And the output level is on maximum. That's maximum amplitude there. The rest we don't really have to touch. Then last, we have to change the range. Usually 50 is a good place to start, and then we can change the frequency using the coarse and the fine knob. So what are we trying to look for here? We're trying to change the frequency gradually and see when the string likes to vibrate the most, when we achieve resonance, so-called. So let's increase the um, frequency slowly. You can see that as we get closer and closer to resonance, the vibration gets bigger and bigger. And once you pass it, then it gets lower again. So it really likes to vibrate at a certain specific frequency, and we can use the fine adjust to make it the absolute biggest amplitude we can get. And this is our n equals 1 pattern, because we have one anti-node in the middle. As we keep increasing, we can go past. And at some point, we're going to achieve our n equals 2 pattern. And you see that beautiful node in the middle there. And likewise, we also have n equals 3, and so on and so forth. So, do read through your lab manual for the rest of the details, and we'll see you in the lab.